Oh, yeah, it's time for secants and tangents. You guys are going to be able to apply the two tangent and radius tangent theorems. Oh, I can't wait. A couple definitions for you here. For tangent, it's a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. And a secant is a line that intersects a circle at exactly two points. And the secant includes or contains a chord. So a secant is going to look something like, well, here's my circle, and there's my secant line. It goes through exactly two points here and here. Here's my chord. Boom. For a tangent, here's my circle, and there's my tangent line. It just touches the circle right there once. Intersects the circle once. Ooh, an awesome theorem about tangents. If a radius is drawn to the point of contact, then the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So let's draw this out. Let's see if I can get a nice tangent to my circle. It's always kind of tough. Ooh, man, that's good. So here's my point of tangent. See my point of contact right there? And here's the center of the circle. Now if I were to draw my radius to that, well, this is perpendicular to the tangent. My radius is perpendicular to the tangent. That's what we're talking about there. Very, very important. We know that we can use perpendicularity all the time in our proofs. Now let's write the converse. Our converse would be if a tangent is perpendicular to the radius, then the tangent and radius intersect on the circle. So we know that they intersect right there on the circle. Woo! Exciting stuff. All right. Here we have a couple concentric circles. Remember, that's the bullseye looking thing with a radius 7 and 25, and they have a center at P. If xy is tangent to the inner circle and it's a core to the outer circle, we want to find xy. So I'm going to first draw a couple concentric circles. So let's see, here's my smaller one and then my outer one, and they both have a center at P. There's my center. Now I know that I have a tangent xy to the inner circle and it's a chord of the outer circle. So here's x, y, and it's tangent, let's say at this point here, I know it's kind of hard to draw it sometimes. I have a radii of 7 and 25. Well, if I draw this radius in the small circle, which is 7, and it's intersecting at the tangent, I know that this is perpendicular. Look at that. I'm already using that theorem. And, and think about this. We always want to make triangles. We're, we're going to try to make triangles a lot in this class. That's the radius of the outer circle, right? And I know that's 25. Huh. I have a 7, 24, 25 triangle. And it's going to be the same thing on the other side. So I know this is going to be 24. Add that together, I get 48 for x, y. No big deal. So remember this style of problem. You're going to see one of these again for sure. So make sure you remember this little trick of setting up a right triangle. So here we have the two tangent theorem. So if two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from an external point, then those segments are congruent. I like to think of this as like the ice cream cone theorem myself. So we have our circle, and then we have our external point out here. If I draw a segment that's tangent here and tangent out here, I've got kind of like an ice cream cone going on. And I know that these two segments are congruent when they're drawn to the point of tangency. Ooh, yeah. There's lots of other cool things you can do with these as well, and we'll explore those in a couple problems here in a moment. Ha! Huh. Exciting. Oh, man, it's proof time. Proof that it is. Yep, all right. So we're given that x, y is a common internal tangent to circles P and Q, and it's tangent at x, y. We're also given that x, s is tangent to circle P at point S. So let's label this circle P. And this is circle Q, and we know that T, or YT, is tangent to circle Q at T. All right. And we want to prove that XS is congruent to YT. So I'm going to write that in blue. I want to prove that these two are congruent. That way I have it in the back of my head. If they're not congruent yet, that's what we're trying to prove. Awesome. Super cool. Okay, so if that's what we're trying to prove, hmm, how can we go about this? Well, if I look at my two tangent theorem, my two tangent theorem would say that these two are congruent, right? And my two tangent theorem would also tell me that yt is congruent to xy. Hmm, 
Well, what I see here, I see that xs is congruent to xy. I see that yt is congruent to xy. Huh. I'm pretty sure I can use the transitive property to prove that xs is congruent to yt. Let's write it out. So I decided not to write my given. I will just go ahead and, and draw an arrow to it. That's a lot of writing to do on this little tablet here and would take forever. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that arrow. Normally I would write in all the given. Number two there, we have our two congruent statements with our two tangent theorem. And lastly, I can have my proof statement xs is congruent to yt because of the transitive property. Remember, transitive property basically makes like a chain of events stick together. So I can prove that xs is congruent to yt using that trans property and we're all set on this proof. Not too bad. So this is called a walk around problem. Kind of tricky when you don't know what to do, but again, this is one of those problems that will be similar to solve each time, just like our first example we had today with the two concentric circles. So each side of a quadrilateral A, B, C, D is tangent to the circle. A, B is 10, so I'm going to label that. It's 10 out here. B, C is 15, and A, D is 18, and we want to find C, D. That's what I want to find out here. Okay? Well, actually, I'm not going to call this x. That's what I want to find, but I'm going to label it a little bit differently. We'll see here in just a second. And basically what happens with this type of problem is stuff ends up canceling out, and I get my values. It's pretty super cool. Well, what I can do here is I'm going to pick one of these segments, one of these guys here or here or wherever, to be x. Now, it's very important which one I pick. I've got to pick where I know information about those sides, so I wouldn't pick any of these two sides because I don't know anything over here. I wouldn't pick one of these two because I don't know anything over here. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to say that this is x right here. And if that's x by the two tangent theorem, that means that this is x, right? Well, if this is x, then this right here is 15 minus x. Think about it. If x were to equal 5, that part right here would equal 10 because 15 minus 5 is 10. All right. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing, but it's going to be 10 minus x for this spot. And then this is also 10 minus x. Meanwhile, this is also 15 minus x. Oh, yeah, that's super cool. Now, here's where it gets a little bit trickier. This segment right here. If I know that this is 10 minus x, take the same concept. I'm going to take whatever this segment is. I'm going to subtract it from the total, and that's going to give me what's left over. I subtract this segment from the total segment and I get the leftover right here. So I'm going to have 18 minus 10 minus x. I'm going to simplify that, distribute. I get 18 minus 10 plus x, so I have 8 plus x. That's what I get for this spot here. Notice the sign change. Oh, what's that going to do? Well, when I want to combine these two together, 15 minus x, plus 8 plus x. So I want to add the two segments to get the whole side. The x's cancel. Pew, pew. And I'm left with 15 plus 8, which gives me 23. And there's my missing side. Oh, man. If you need an instant replay, you can rewind it. It's about a three-minute clip right here. Pop it back. A couple quick things about tangent circles, externally tangent circles, like this right here, right next to each other. They look like cells dividing in science class, science. Internally tangent, circle inside of one, and it's touching at one point. Both are just touching at one point, because that's what tangent means, not secant. Awesome. The diagram on the left here shows two circles and a common internal tangent. And the one on the right shows two circles and a common external tangent. So we have internal and we have external. All right, awesome. Now this is important when you're drawing it because in a problem like the next one we're going to try, it's going to tell us about internal or external tangents and we need to know which one it looks like. So here we have the centers of two circles with radii 10 and 18 are 17 units apart. Find the length of the common external tangent. So we're looking for that external tangent. If you remember back to the last slide, that's the one that's on the outside, external, outside. That makes sense. So I have two circles. Now you're not always going to be able to draw these 
exactly right and exactly to scale. So try to uh, not worry so much about the exact scale of these. Because sometimes actually the circles should have overlapped in your, in your drawing, but you didn't draw it that way in the beginning. And that's okay. Make sure your numbers work out. So we have this common external tangent. That's what we're trying to find. All right, that's what we're trying to figure out here. Now, it says the centers of two circles with radii 10 and 18 are 17 units apart. <clears throat> so this right here says 17 units apart. The centers are 17 units apart. Boom. All right. I have radii of 10. This is the smaller one, so I'll do 10 and 18. Clearly right now you can see 18, 17, not the scale, but whatever. I'm setting up my problem. It's going to happen. I'm not going to have everything perfect every time. Get used to it. It says find the length of the common external tangent. Well, there's a trick to do this one, just like a couple of those other problems, that if you set it up right, it's not too bad. Let's call this X. That's what I'm looking for. And again, let's look for some right triangles. If I draw this going across perpendicular, if that's X, then this is X as well. Now, I, what I've just done is made a rectangle. This is a rectangle right here. And what do we know about rectangles? Opposite sides congruent. So this is 10 here. That means this is 10 here, which means this little spot right here that I have left over is 8. Now, what kind of triangle is this? 8, what, 17? 8, 15, 17. Oh, yeah, those triples come into play all the time. Do you have to have them? Not necessarily, but it's going to save you some time. And time's money. If you need to try another one of these walk around problems, feel free to try this one and see if you can get the answer. I'm just going to put the work up here with the answer. So when you're ready, hit play. All right. All right, there's the work. Feel free to pause it and take a look at it and see if you made any mistakes. Again, you could have started with the X's here and here, or you could have started with them here and here. Your answer should still work out to be 10. Here's your homework. Have fun.